Have you guys ever been watching Supercross and see the rider sailing through the air and suddenly see the rear wheel stop spinning? Or maybe you heard the engine rev really loud? One technique lowers the front end of the bike while the other raises the front end of the bike. It's simple physics. Physics certainly relates to Supercross, but it relates to that classical mechanics, that Newtonian part, the mathematics and the understanding of was complete uh, 150 years ago. Think about people going off of a jump. The rear wheel is obvious how it's spinning. It's spinning pretty fast, right? The front end is coming up. You're doing a wheelie as you come off this thing, and it's gonna go loop out on you. What can you do? We can invoke the law of conservation of angular momentum, and you can bring that front wheel back down. Initially, the motorcycle and the rider are rotating backwards. The rear wheel is rotating in the opposite direction. If you looked at it from the side, one of them is clockwise and one of them is counterclockwise. What you need to do is apply the rear brake, slow the rear wheel from spinning quite as fast as it was, and you take that angular momentum that the rear wheel had going this direction, and you add it to your motorcycle going backwards, and the two of them you can make cancel out. So the motorcycle comes back down and goes straight off. The opposite of that is the case where the front wheel is falling as you go off the jump. In that case, you need to make the rear wheel spin faster. You hold the throttle wide open, and the rear wheel spins faster, and that makes the front end come up. Because the wheels are large, have a large amount of mass, and they're rotating fairly quickly, so they have a large amount of angular momentum, and so that's why they're the important things. But we're not concerned with this, how fast the piston's moving or the crankshaft is spinning. It's small and it's, it's, uh, it's less important. It's a question of transferring angular momentum from one body to the other body. Which means if you take some angular momentum from the rear wheel, then you have to give it to the rider and the rest of the motorcycle. It's that simple. 